in the memory of late Mrs. Alka Hemant Patil. We are glad to present our audio articles for inspiring disabled persons to achieve greater heights in their career. Under the project of Client Service Department of National Association for the Blind, India, to empower the disabled in tribal, rural and semi-urban areas of our country. Faith has to do with things that are not seen and hope with the things that are not in hand. St. Thomas Aquinas Pratibha Bhole Whether it is Katakara, Hiragana or Kanji, the 46 distinctive Japanese characters are written in stroke order. And if the stroke goes wrong, the intended word is illegible. How difficult a language is this then for visually impaired Pratibha Bhole to master? But that is exactly what the 44-year-old tall imposing lady is busy doing. Pratibha's life is many different stories. When she lost her eyesight quite suddenly in an accident, she was 15 years old and on the threshold of her SSC exam. The shock of this tragedy and the lack of support she faced from the SSC board left Pratibha feeling cloistered. But though she rode the wave, wave of panic and insecurity, her determination to complete her schooling shone through. With no one to read to her, Pratibha delved into her memory and wrote her papers as best as she could. She was allotted a writer for the exam, but no extra time. Not being used to the world of the blind yet, she could not complete her papers even with the help of a writer. But she managed to pass the exam. Pratibha decided not to go to college but joined the rehabilitation center at NAB India. Here she learned to live her new life with courage and independence. She worked as a telephone operator for one year before being selected by the Union Bank for a parallel post from amongst several other candidates. A lady of many interests, despite her full-time job, Pratibha is an enthusiastic social worker. She's been the president of JC's Forum of Pune Blind and Disabled in 1991 and is the joint secretary of Nav Jeevan and the Apang Kalyan Mandal Pune. Intent upon uplifting the status of blind women and creating new opportunities for them, her work towards rehabilitation of blind women from rural areas is praiseworthy. Being a poet and fond of music herself, she has created the opportunity for blind girls to perform on AIR Pune and furthered the cause of the blind orchestra by organizing donations for them. Not wholly consumed by the disability issue, the first award, Kusumagraj, that Pratibha won was for her insightful book of poems. This was followed by the Neelam Kanga Prize for composition and publication of her poems in 1997. Pratibha felt honoured. After receiving the Neelam Kanga Prize, my enthusiasm was doubled because of the prize, I am respected even more in the various institutions that I visit in connection with my social work, she says. The list of Pratibha's awards and certificates of merit is impressive. She is a Vishrad in music. She has been felicitated by the Rotary Club, by the state government and is the recipient of the Shah Modak Award for Social Work and Literature. She has written over 300 poems in Marathi. Her published book is entitled Man Chakshu. What we cannot see with our physical eyes, we manage to do with the eyes in our mind, she explains. Pratibha admits to many difficult moments in life, but I cannot acknowledge them, she says. I must find a path through them. That is the victory in life. Pratibha lives with her mother and enjoys singing, playing the Casio and knitting in her free time. Having been greatly impacted by the methods used in Japan for the rehabilitation of the blind, Pratibha 
was inspired to learn the language to facilitate her research. She is mastering the Japanese written language through Braille and spoken Japanese with help from teachers. She is already fluent enough to converse and exchange ideas on prevailing trends with visiting Japanese experts. She hopes one day to be able to visit Japan in order to promote international integration through mutual sharing of expertise. But this is not the end of Pratibha's ambition, nor does she feel that she has reached the limits of her achievement potential. She wants to participate in national and international conferences to observe and contribute and to become a member of the Blind Council. She works tirelessly to create awareness about the cause of the blind in Pune. Having achieved more than most people do in a lifetime of successes, armoured by her strong faith and with destiny as her guide, no matter where she goes, Pratibha influences and colours the minds of the people who come within her dynamic orbit. Know thyself, believe in God and dare to dream. John Sally Preeti Singh Simla A sprawling wooden house with dark parquet floors echoing footsteps. A large round dining table to hide under. A playroom with a sunroof where monkeys romp and peep in at the child below. A good child, never too inquisitive to explore, never disruptive, never any trouble. A child who cannot see very well. But no, no one knew that until Preeti was much older. Preeti remembers this hazy haven in Simla because that is where she lived until she was six. She remembers too the large sun-drenched garden with its neat harlequin flower beds, the mud paths that led to the house, the skating rink where she often scraped her little knees and the climb up, to the, up the hill to school holding her father's hand. When she was 21 days old, Preeti reacted adversely to smallpox vaccine which affected her vision. And as she grew, her vision dimmed until by the time she reached the 8th standard, she could no longer see at all. The principal of L Loreto Convent, Delhi, where she was studying then, thought it best to terminate her studies. This and the cruel shock of her blindness put her parents into a panic. What would they do now to rehabilitate their little daughter? When no other school would accept Preeti, her mother enrolled her for music classes. Her friends convinced her that God gifts the blind with music, Preeti laughs, but I was really bad at it right from the start. I just, not, just did not have a musical bent at all. So Preeti had to work really hard. She practiced up to eight hours a day for the next five years and eventually got the Vishrad Diploma at Gandharva Mahavidyale, Delhi. But as soon as she could, she gave it up and banished all memory of the sitar from her mind. When Preeti told her parents that she wanted to marry, they were relieved because they felt that now she would be safe and happy. But marriage did not prove successful and a few years later, Preeti returned to her parents' home along with her two babies. That was a very low time for me, she admits. I felt bad about burdening my parents with my responsibility. And what made it worse was that they never complained but were always so kind and supportive. Preeti put her mind very seriously to what she could do to earn a living. She had in the meantime completed her 10th standard exam from the National Open School. But that was not an adequate qualification to get a suitable job. It was while listening to the Keep Fit program on television conducted by the well-known Veena merchant that the thought of becoming an aerobics instructor came to Preeti. She contacted Miss Merchant and expressed her determination to teach aerobics, an unusual request which was turned down at once. 
In all her travels, Miss Merchant had never come across a visually impaired teacher of aerobics, nor did she know how to begin training one. But Preeti was insistent and learnt quickly and well, and though she did need special help at times, Miss Merchant saw immediately that she had a natural aptitude. Granted space in the basement of the St. Thomas Church in Delhi, Preeti started taking classes with help from her brother who accompanied her and helped her by looking out for the mistakes her students made so that she could correct them. The classes were most successful. Preeti demonstrated the exercises to packed classes with 40 students attending each class. For 10 years, while her infants grew, Preeti trained many satisfied students and then the doctors diagnosed her with an autoimmune disorder. This meant that the classes had to stop. But Preeti now had confidence in herself and knew that she would find an alternate occupation. She soon got a job with NAB Delhi branch as a resource teacher. She taught computers while she was being treated for her disorder. She also became the secretary of the governing council at NAB Delhi. In 1997, Preeti was awarded the Neelam Kanga Prize for being the first and only blind aerobics teacher in the country. While she was happy, she was surprised that she had thus been rewarded for something which she did not think merited attention. I have spent my whole life feeling so normal that I never felt that anything I did had any real significance, she says. Preeti also won the Red and White Bravery Award for social work. The main thrust of her work is to promote inclusion of the disabled into the mainstream of life. Don't pity the blind, she says. Don't send us to special schools. Let us live in an integrated environment and compensate for our lack through our other faculties which take over more than adequately. Preeti also took on a job at PPS Private Limited as a marketing executive selling their food, food products. Here she met her second husband, a kind gentleman who proved to be a wonderful husband and a marvellous father to Preeti's two children. Preeti lives with her re-established family in a cosy little DDA flat in Delhi. She works now at Dr. Shroff's Charity Eye Hospital and heads the Public Relations Department. Preeti's dream is to get into the multinational sector and work in the field of marketing or public relations, customer services or in the corporate communications department. My strength lies in these areas, she says. Whilst Preeti has a hazy memory of what her mother looks like, Today I have my own way of seeing things, she says with confidence. I know what my children look like and my husband. My recent impression of my mother too is through touch, through hearing her voice and from giving and receiving hugs. As soon as her children become independent, she intends to devote all her time towards creating an awareness wave to show people how easy it is to embrace the visually impaired and help them feel equal in every way. Preeti wishes to empower the blind to stand up for their own rights and not fall passively into the place that has been set aside for them by ignorant, preconditioned society. When your heart is in your dream, no request is too extreme. Unknown. Nafisa Shikari one of the most surprising things about human nature is the capacity to suffer disabilities graciously. Dignified, soft-spoken and meticulously turned out, Nafisa Shikari epitomizes this quality most perfectly. The last amongst a family of four sisters and a brother, Nafisa was brought up being corseted and not only because she was the youngest. Her parents' focus was centred on their delicate little daughter in worry. 
As she grew, smiling and sunny, with the song in her heart, their worst fears were confirmed when she was diagnosed with retinitis pigmentosa, a degenerative disease of the retina. Nafisa's early happy memories are of being encased in a bubble of affection, of waiting impatiently for the dulcet ring of the ice candy man and of looking out of the window into the starry night searching for the half moon hanging in the sky. She remembers too quite vividly her trips to the ophthalmologist and the sorrow that for some reason seemed to wash over her parents after each visit. School was walking distance from her home, a one-room apartment in a crowded, friendly neighbourhood in Bombay. But setting foot outside the charmed security of her home was a confusing experience for sensitive little Nafisa. The difference in people's attitude towards her startled her and threatened to restrict her spontaneous effervescence. Two little girls, kind of heart and generous and loving, adopted Nafisa as soon as they met at school. They took her on as an unconscious priority and helped her study. They took her to the movies, on school trips and picnics and they walked with her at night when she had the maximum difficulty with her vision. They soothed her then and allayed her fears. Nafisa passed her SSC from Tehri High School with distinction writing her exam through a writer. She was always encouraged by the principal and her supportive teachers. Nafisa now had to make her first major compromise in life and face the harsh fact that her failing eyesight would not allow her the strain of studying science. Very reluctantly, she accepted the advice of the principal and with deep despair abandoned her dream of becoming a doctor. A dream she had carried in her heart since her childhood. When I counsel visually impaired youngsters, the first thing I tell them is to accept the reality and limitations of their disability, Nafisa says with candor. Acceptance is a very difficult and painful process. It was during her inter-arts year that Nafisa sadly realized through her own distressing experience how bigoted and unaccommodating people can be towards the disabled. Just before her exam paper, the principal of the exam centre almost banned her from the exam on a matter of the identification of her scribe when quite clearly she had all the proof required to confirm his identity. Shaken and disoriented, Nafisa managed nonetheless to pass the exam with the first division and won three scholarships in recognition of her academic excellence. College life at St. Xavier's with economics as her subject reinstilled some lost confidence and a different ambition grew. Nafisa set her sights on doing an MBA. Life lifted Nafisa on its wave once again, alternately carrying her up on a white-tipped crest and plummeting her down to deep depths. But Nafisa held on, rejoicing in her success and storing all the hurts that came her way in a secret, wounded part of her heart. The Social Service League of the college provided Nafisa with readers and writers. And the professors were encouraging and helpful, so impressed were they by this serious-minded girl of unusual grit. The principal, too, pledged his support by giving Nafisa the use of his office during the exams so that she could study there with her tape recorder, which disturbed the others in the library. NAB India came into Nafisa's life only after her graduation when it was time to find a job. At a crossroads and not sure which direction to take, Nafisa had to face another blow to her aspirations. Her peers at NAB, who were now a significant advisory presence in her life, discouraged her from pursuing the MBA route, fearing that the job market, Nafisa, would be prejudged because of her disability and not be given a fair chance. 
they offered her instead the course of a telephone operator which would ensure that she got a job. In 1978, after having completed her telephone operator's course, Nafisa was employed by the Central Bank of India in Bombay. Not content with the monotony of her job, Nafisa took two major promotional exams to better her career prospects at the bank, and despite grave reservations from her seniors and advisers, which led to the weakening of her own resolve at times, she landed on her feet each time. Today, Nafisa is a manager at the Central Bank of India. She works as a corporate dealer handling both ready and forward transactions. She advises her customers on hedging their exposures and coordinates with her international division to arrange foreign currency loans for her clients. Hemant J Patil Honorary Secretary National Association for the Blind India